Just a while ago, a massive amount of news had been poured out about a major power link project, an initiative set out to connect the northern parts of Australia to Singapore and pass through Indonesia in hopes to generate power from one country to another. This power link project was then going to be so massive to the point that it was named the upcoming biggest solar power known to mankind. Its solar producing capacity was estimated to be around 20 gigawatts, and it would also house the world's largest battery storage, which would have between 36 to 42 gigawatts. All of these would also house the world's longest submarine power cable, which would exactly stretch from the city of Darwin, Australia and head toward Singapore. This grand, magnificent plan would of course be a hefty price at $30 billion. The scale that this project is hoping to do was praised not just for breaking records, but also for its role in using renewable energy. The project's name is known as the Australia Asia Power Link, which is slated to start its construction by 2024 and have a full capacity completion by 2029. That would have been the case, however, the project started to fall apart. In January 2023, the developer of the project known as Sun Cable would go into administration, which was almost the equivalent of a Chapter 11 bankruptcy, ending the dreams of adhering to a cleaner and greener future and ending, arguably, one of the biggest projects to be ever constructed in history. Most people may or may not have even heard of this project, and a lot of questions are continuously going back and forth about the project's future. Has the Australia-Asia power link truly collapsed? Or is there still a possible future where it could exist? Well, let us understand all about this project at the very beginning. Initially, the project was announced to only connect Australia and Singapore, and it was known as the Australia-Singapore Power Link. But the development of the project, the promises, and its future potential grew, which made it viable to become a larger project and pour some of its power into Indonesia, hence changing the name of the project to what is now known as Australia-Asia Power Link. Like how it started, its power capacity was also projected to be lower at first. The initial concept saw a 10 gigawatt power producing scheme, but changed to 20 gigawatts. Its battery storage capacity also grew from 20 gigawatts to 42 gigawatts, and all of these were projected to cost 22 billion US dollars or 30 billion Australian dollars. These were a massive sum of money, and surely its economic contribution would be felt around the shared nations. Its employment projections still stated that it would bring in 1,500 jobs in construction, 350 operational jobs, and 12,000 indirect jobs, which are all to be created across Singapore, Australia, and Indonesia. The solar farm, especially, was reported to sit on a 12,000 hectare area around the Northern Territory of Australia. It was also reported to house some of the best areas in the entire world for solar resources, which pushed its viability to become an attractive investment. The solar farm will then be connected to an 800-kilometer overhead power line stretching to Darwin, the capital city of Northern Territory, and from there will go into an undersea power line of a 4,200-kilometer length passing Indonesia and heading to Singapore. The Australia-Asia power link was then heralded as a huge economic breakthrough. Not only will it help boost the Australian economy by yet again adopting an alternative power source available in Darwin and reportedly increase export values by about 2 billion Australian dollars, but it will also help Singapore stray away from its usage of non-renewable energy, which is reported to be a major user of natural gas. This will then help boost the economy of Australia and help Singapore in using less natural gas. To be more precise, data as of 2021 from the Energy Market Authority of Singapore, natural gas occupies 95% of the entire fuel mix for electricity generation in Singapore. Therefore, as soon as this project is completed, which is projected to have its first delivery around 2027 in Darwin and to Singapore by 2028 and a full capacity by 2029, it can, as estimated, have enough power to supply 20% of Singapore's entire energy industry. Another source of energy will not only help Singapore find alternative energies, but it may also help continue the country's strive with its highly intensive manufacturing and service sectors.
Finally, if we come to the project's cost, which is estimated to be over 30 billion Australian dollars, it is, in most cases, not a small sum. A 30 billion dollar price tag could be enough to herald historical moments. This brings us to the most important question. Who was going to fund this project? Or even, who are the backers of the Australia Asian Power Link? The company, named Sun Cable Energy, is reported to be owned by Andrew Forrest and Mike Cannon Brooks, both of which are Australian billionaires. Andrew Forrest sits as the majority shareholder for Fortescue Metals Group, one of the largest mining companies globally, and Mike Cannon Brooks is known as the co-founder and co-CEO of Atlassian, a major Australian software company. Both of these Australian billionaires would also go on to partner up with other companies. They would either partner with leading companies or even ask some investment companies to help with the entire funding. It is reported that Sun Cable Energy had entered into two funding rounds, raising about $151.2 million on two occasions. They are backed by two prominent Australian firms in funding. Although its fundraising has helped them land million-dollar budgets, they were still on the hunt for more. However, while these funding rounds were very important for the company to go forward, they would also be part of the problem that the company would face. Come January of 2023, Sun Cable would report that it had gone into administration. Raising fears among netizens and questions around the media and industry experts, raising questions why has such a massive billionaire backing a massive and opportunistic project to collapse out of nowhere? Going into voluntary administration and appointing an administration administrator to oversee the company also meant that the company was in trouble. It may have been partly due to its balance sheet, where cash is becoming scarce, or it could be due to managerial errors. Well, was it really about money? Have these Australian billionaires failed to find investors or even funnel their own cash into the project? The voluntary administration move, after all, was even reported to either have the company recapitalized or have the entire company sold. It is as if the company had, out of nowhere, failed to be managed properly. There were several rumors, several speculators and official statements that went in and around the industry as to what happened. In a statement published by Sun Cable, saying that, quote, the consensus on the future direction and funding structure of the company could not be achieved, raising concerns regarding the potential of the company had the project failed to attract investors. An article published in Reuters stated that the, quote, 2022 capital raising of $151.2 million included milestones that have not been met yet, meaning that not all of the funding has been made available, end quote. Media and official statements however, may only account for the tip of the iceberg. The Sydney Morning Herald, on the other hand, had reported that there was a spat between the two high-profile Australian billionaires, which was what led to the company's collapse. The article further stated that the two billionaires were unable to agree on new funding terms to prop up the ailing business, which had reportedly been bleeding cash for a number of months. In other words, they were unable to agree on several business matters. They had vetoed each other's potential deals and disagreed with options to enable the company to raise funds. Yet, due to this failure to comply with each other, they had no other choice but to leave the company for voluntary administration. Now, while there are many disagreements made in the company, it is still possible that the company may still continue its mega project. For the most part, there are some industry experts and even the appointed administrators that have been seeking to unblock these issues. Hopes of continuing the development, in other words, are very high, and these voluntary administrations may just be short-term. However, as of the time of this writing, it is still unknown whether they can actually fix the issues. The company, as several statements showed, can be sold. Will someone pick up a $30 billion endeavor? Whereas if the owners do indeed find an agreement with one another, then it would be likely that things will go as originally planned. But the probability of that happening may be staggeringly low. But who knows what the future holds? Do let us know what you think. Do you think that this project will be fulfilled? If so, what do you think will happen in the future? Let us know down below. Thanks for watching.